Welcome back to another 100 horror movies you've got to see. This week, we're doing our third Dracula story. Let me be more specific. This is the 1958 British horror version of Dracula. It was later renamed the Horror of Dracula so that it would not be confused with the American version. So this is the third version of Dracula on this list of 100, but it's only the second movie with Dracula in the title. The first version was the 1922 German film Nosferatu, which we covered, I think, in the third episode of this series, which was a direct ripoff of Bram Stoker's Dracula, but we get into a little bit more of that in that episode. If you want, go check it out. The second film was the 1931 Dracula, starring Bela Lugosi. In this film, Christopher Lee, who is a great villain in a lot of movies that I've seen him in, takes on the role of Dracula. Now I'm going to show you a picture of his Dracula, and I'm going to read a quote that I discovered while researching this. You let me know if you agree with this quote. Lee also introduced a dark, brooding sexuality to the character. Lee's sensuality was subverse in that it hinted that women might quite like having their neck chewed on by a stud. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know if that's the, I don't know if that's what I got from, uh, from his interpretation or his portrayal of this Dracula. But what I will say is there might be a cultural difference here. I know that British comedy differs a lot from American comedy on how they view their main character. In Britain, they love their main characters to constantly get the short end of the stick. While here in America, we like to see our main characters succeed and pull ahead of the rest of the group. I don't know what their stance on horror is or what their stance on horror was back in 1958. And I believe it was in 2017 that Empire Magazine ranked Christopher Lee's Dracula as the seventh greatest horror character of all time. I, I think there might be seven better on this list, and we're only on the third row. I'm very curious to see if anybody is going to stand up and have Christopher Lee's back on this in the comments below. I'd really like to hear another point of view on it. So if you've got one, I'm all ears, baby. <laughs> I'm so sorry I said that. As for the movie in general, I didn't see a whole lot of variants from the other two Dracula movies because all three are taking from the same source material, which is Bram Stoker's Dracula. Ironically enough, with that being said, none of them quite get Bram Stoker's Dracula which is probably why, in 1992, we get Bram Stoker's Dracula. Which I cannot believe is not on this list. <laughs> Some of the issues I have with this film are there are things that are done that just logically don't make sense. We begin the movie following Jonathan Harker, who already knows about Dracula and goes to Dracula's castle with the intentions of killing him bringing along his own pre-made stakes to get the job done. When he finds Dracula's lair in the coffins? I, I don't know if that's technically what they would be called because they don't have lids. So they're not coffins and they're not caskets, which I just earlier this week found out what the difference was. Hmm. But when he finds Dracula and the female vampire under Dracula's control in this lair, he walks past Dracula to stake the female vampire, whose screams obviously wake up Dracula. I don't understand why he wouldn't go to Dracula first to take care of the big bed instead of dealing with a minion. Followed immediately by the next thing that makes no sense, Dracula gets up from his coffin, goes upstairs, and exits the room just so that Harker can turn around and see Dracula walk back in the room and back down the stairs. I don't understand why Dracula would have left and then come back in. I think that was a decision from the director, maybe thinking that watching Dracula 
walk down the steps and not knowing if Harker was going to be okay or adding some sort of tension to the scene. But you got there in a way that made no sense. Another big issue I have is the placement of some of these vampire bites or the teeth marks, which looked like they would have been nearly impossible to make just trying to get into, <laughs> into the neck area. The final scene where Dracula is caught in the sunlight does have some good special effects for the time, so much so that they weren't allowed in the movie. It wasn't until 2012 that they were released and put back into the movie using footage from a badly damaged, I believe, Japanese print uh, to make the full movie originally what it was supposed to be. I think starting off with a few strikes already against it, being the third installment of the same movie within 20, 30 years, without really going more in depth into the character. Not that this movie gave Christopher Lee a lot of time to do that. With a running time of only 82 minutes, it was a very short, condensed, less than an hour and a half long movie. So you can only do so much with the time that you're given. Lee did mention in a lot of interviews that he wished he was able to portray Dracula the way that Bram Stoker had written him. Your hands are tied by what the studio is allowing you to do and what the director tells you to do. So I'm sure if Lee had more creative control, we would have gotten a very different movie. Overall, it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't what I was expecting for the third version of a movie. You expect to see some advancements in a film when it's done 30 years after the original, give or take, uh, that I just don't see really hit those marks. Which brings us to the scratching of Dracula from 1958, wherever it is. And here is the scratching. This looks like Van Helsing on the front, so I'm assuming we're going to get Dracula underneath this scratch-off. Because if it's not Dracula, I'd be very confused. Oh, yeah. There's the count. Dracula from 1958. So that is the scratching off of Dracula. Next week we're going to be checking out the original House on Haunted Hill. I've seen the remake but I have not seen the original so this might be one of those I do one for the Thursday and one for the Patreon on Monday kind of movies so I'm kind of excited about that <laughs> to do a comparison of the original versus the remake. I want to take a second to thank everybody for watching these videos, hopefully hitting all those buttons down below, maybe leaving a comment telling me what you think. A very big I love you, thank you to the Patreon subscribers whose names are going to pop up in just a few moments. It really does mean a lot that you guys are checking out these videos. Hopefully you are enjoying them as much as I'm enjoying watching these old films. And if your friends are movie buffs too, let them know about this channel. Let's get a conversation going because I'm very curious to see if my thoughts are matching a lot of other people's, or if I am completely alone. But until next time, I love you all, and I'll see you next Thursday. Later days.